Good morning, YouTube. I'm, my name is Ryan, and this is Five Star Dairy Boys. And if you're new here, you're probably wondering, why the name Five Star Dairy Boys? Well, my family farm is called Five Star Dairy, so I just added the boys on the end of it. And the reason for Five Star Dairy, the name of that, is because I have four brothers. So that makes five of us boys. And that, and my parent, when my parents, when my parents bought the place, they said, "Hey, let's name it after our boys," and it's Five Star Dairy. So it's pretty cool. We're located in Michigan, which is in the United States of America. I know I get people from all around the world that watch. Thanks for watching, guys. It's pretty cool. So today we're gonna, we're actually gonna be with our nutritionist, Cornerstone Ag Management, and it's gonna be a really cool video. You guys are gonna learn a lot about why why we do what we do, how we feed our cows, different things like that. Right now they're making the first batch for the morning and it's just pretty cool stuff. So this is Tom Vanderwall and Tom, why don't you introduce yourself and Cornerstone Ag Management. So my name is Tom Vanderwall. I work for Cornerstone Ag Management. We are a small group of nutritionists. Uh, there's seven of us total. Um, I think I maybe have to double check that but uh, what we do is we work together as a team but we also have our own farms so uh, we like to uh, bounce things off each other but at the same time uh, we make sure that we go to each one of our farms on a consistent basis to make sure that what we are putting on paper the cows need to tell us if it's working or not so Right, and a big thing with you guys is that you're all independent. We are. We're independent. We do not uh, work for a feed mill. What we will do is we will work, work with several different feed mills to get the accurate price. Uh, if there's a certain farm that likes to work with a certain feed mill, that's what we do. So uh, we're flexible that way, uh, and we try to get the best product to the farm. So the biggest thing with being uh, an independent nutritionist is that you are not subject to any price from any feed mill. Say a uh, feed mill has a really good corn price, but they're, what, what's another price that, I mean, canola, soybean, meal or soybean, canola or... soybean meal, canola, maybe, it, maybe that price is better somewhere else. They can pick and choose which feed mill they, they go to for each product. And that gives the farmer the best price uh, able and it makes it so that the farmer's more profitable. Okay, so Tom's gonna explain why he does what he does in the pens when he walks them, why he walks the pens, and why it's important. So what we do is we want to make sure that what we're feeding the cows, the cows are reacting in the way that we think they should. So we look at their hair coats, we look at their body condition, we look at the manure, all kinds of different things that we think, uh, if we want to make sure what, they, what we are feeding, they are actually uh, consuming, but then also producing. So the big thing that we look for is a healthy cow and we try to keep it as simple as we can because a healthy cow produces milk and it reproduces and it stays in the herd so that's one of the main things that we really look for so happy healthy cows is really important you'll see these cows they're very comfortable around humans um, they're treated well and a big part of that is their nutrition so these cows feel good a hundred percent of the time they're always happy they're always healthy and that's huge uh, just like the California dairies used to say, a happy cow is a healthy cow, and that's true. He's going to kick the manure, he's going to check the stiffness, see if it's too loose, too stiff, just right. We're looking for consistency, so we want to see all these piles the same. You'll see they all look the same. One's not loose, one's not stiff. Look for good cut chewing. We're also checking for good cut chewing, so you'll see her. She's chewing her cut right there. She's comfortable. She's happy. So what they do is they they go to the feed bunk and then they come back and um, when they lay down they can regurgitate what they ate and they bring it back up and that's called chewing cud. So here, what Tom, Tom explain what you're looking for in this feed. So we look for particle length, we want to make sure that it's uh, uh, digestible, we want to make sure that the cow wants to eat it, it's got to be the right moisture, uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just try to make a snowball out of it and then that makes sure that's enough moisture for the cow if it's too dry what they'll do is they'll sort it and they'll dig a hole and they'll get all kinds of different goodies and they won't get a mixed ration of all the things they need so uh, this looks mixed very well uh, looks like a good ration how's the particle length Tom particle length is good 
Uh, it's maybe, well, they do a really good job of grinding it down. Some people like it maybe just a little bit longer. We like to have everything toothpick size or smaller. Um, that way it just, we would rather, it takes energy for a cow to grind it down and it takes energy for the farmer to grind it down. We would rather have the cow do less and produce more milk. So yeah, with that being said, a cow only has so much energy, no matter how much energy you give her. So if she's got to transfer that energy into breaking down her feed, she's not going to be able to put that energy towards making milk. And the more milk they make, the better for us. And the, the more comfortable they are, is the better for them. So it's a win-win it's a win-win situation for us and them to treat the cows right and to make sure they are as healthy as they can be. Which is why we're with Cornerstone Ag Management. They're, they're really good. Okay, this is the, what I call the feed specialist, but he'll kind of introduce himself more. This is Harrison, so go ahead, Harrison. Hey, my name is Harrison Hobart. I work for Alltech. Um, what we're doing here today is just kind of a little bit of a feed audit for these guys, TMR audit. So what I'm working on right now, um, I've got a bucket full of samples. So what we're doing is I'm pulling 10 samples across um, the feed out here, and I will be shaking those out with a Penn State shaker box, particle separator, looking at particle size. So what we're looking for here is just consistency across speed out. Um, what is our fiber length? There's been a lot of research done to look at um, what's the most effective fiber length for cattle, for rumination. So, so, that, so Harrison, what is the most effective length? So, so on the shaker box, so the second, so the second, so the top screen looks at your long fiber, second screen um, is allowed three quarters of an inch. Um, and that is really what's decided as been most effective fiber. We chop corn silage at about three quarters of an inch. Um, we've got, of course, when we're feeding commodities too, we've got a lot of fines that come through as well. Um, so we've got ranges for every screen. So measuring, and I can, and I can show you later too, yep, yep. Um, what we've got for, for different screens. So for every, um, for every tray, we've got a designated range that we want to be within. Um, and so what I'll track today then, and I'll see when I shake these out is, are we within those ranges? How far do we deviate? And then I want to check then consistency within those ranges across the feed out for, for every group that we're shaking out today. Right, so we feed with two different mixers and, but those mixers feed the same pens every single day. So what we're seeing is, is there a mixer doing better than the other? Is it the difference of the TMR? Because each of those mixers is feeding a different TMR. Although they have the same mix, they're gonna have different different quantities of each ingredient that we put in. So we're gonna see uh, how it's all faring out and how it's all gonna look. So Harrison, why don't you explain what this is and why you do it? You bet, so this is an infrared camera. So what I use this for in particular is looking at the faces of our corn silage and haylage piles. Um, so what I'm looking for is, is heating in the face. Um, so if you want to come around here, I can yep, show you right I there will. on the screen. So what we're looking at here is that face. So it's been pretty freshly faced. Let me see if I can make sure that they can see it. There we go. Yep. You guys should be able to see it pretty well. Yep. So what we're looking at here is, uh, is the face of the corn silage pile. It's been pretty freshly faced. Um, so what you can see here, the green, the blues, and purples is all showing pretty cool. And then as we start seeing some red, um, in particular kind of along that top line of the pile, um, that's where we're seeing some of our heating. So uh, when we're putting up corn silage and haylage like this, um, you know, essentially this is a fermented feed. I mean, that's really what it is. It's a fermented feed just right. like sauerkraut, just like kimchi, just like any of that um, you know, fermented foods you'd buy at the grocery store. Um, so it is stable in an anaerobic environment. So as soon as we start introducing oxygen in, we start to see uh, microbial activity. So we'll see yeast come in first. Um, that's why we can get some issues with some wild yeast and that can upset rumens. Um, molds will tend to follow after. Um, we can see those whites, reds, grays, greens. Even oranges, right? Uh, even oranges. There's all kinds of colors. Um, and, and those of course cause issue um, digestive upset for the cows as well 
Um, and then mycotoxins as well. Those are compounds created by molds too. That's another thing that we got to worry about and something to keep conscious. And so that's why, you know, in my job, I hammer, you know, want to have a, a nice, clean, smooth face, as smooth as we can. Because what we're doing is we're limiting the amount of surface area exposed to oxygen. Um, so that's why I like to see you guys do an excellent, you guys do an excellent job. Thank you, Harrison. Hands in this face. Um, this is exactly what I like to see, top to bottom. It's nice, it's smooth, it's even, it's flat, all the way to the top. It's safe. I mean, there's no overhang. There's no real big issues um, with pitting out and, and safety concerns with, with big chunks falling. That's always a concern when we're when we're getting around piles of this size. Always something to be careful about. That's right. So what Harrison was talking about with those red lines that were on the camera is, is the heat spots on top. And the reason there, that there is heat spots on top was that when we got done with corn silage, it say it took us four days to get up there to find enough guys to make sure we could put plastic on top and then put tires on top of the plastic. And it rained during that time. So what that does is it creates a little layer that's not perfect. Now our pile's pretty good, um, but obviously, with the infrared camera, you can see it's not perfect. Uh, from just standing here looking at it, it'd be pretty hard to tell other than that top inch. So Harrison, I see you're shaking out the feed now. Can you explain that a little more? Yeah, sure. So so this is the Penn State shaker box I was talking to you guys about earlier. Um, so when I'm pulling all these samples, so here I've got, I've done the first couple on that, on that high barn that we did. Um, so these are all the samples that I'm shaking out. So, um, so what we're looking for is is identifying particle length. So I've got four pans here and I've got varying sizes of screen. Um, and so there's been a lot of research done on, on particle length and the effect that it has on, on rumination. Um, so really what I'm trying to do here with this, what we're trying to do is just determine um, the, the particle length of the TMR that's being fed. Um, and then I track I'll track what percentages we have for each screen, and then my reasoning for pulling multiple samples across the feed out is simply just to, simply just to track consistency, simply just to track consistency um, across feed out, um, just to see how good of a job we're doing. It's all about consistency. Uh, we want every cow getting about the same mouthful of feed as the one standing right next to it, the one in the front of the bar, front of the pen, and the one all the way on the far end. So. Um, so how this works, pour the sample in here in the top, Get it all shaken out. And I'll shake it five times back and forth, move it to the ground eight times. see we've got all our particles are separated out by their various sizes then I will go measure all these out I've got a scale I'll measure out the volume take percentages and use those and chart and track um, how much variability we have in our different particle lengths across the feed out so what type of percentages will you be calculating yeah so I'll be I mean, I'll just be, I'll just be finding the percentages. So I, so ideally, um, what you want, Penn State recommendations for top screen on this shaker box would be two to eight percent long stem, long fiber particles on the second. We want between thirty and fifty percent. This third screen, we'd like to see between ten and twenty percent, and then in the bottom pan, thirty to forty percent. Those are kind of our targets, two to eight. 30 to 50, 10 to 20, 30 to 40. That's ideally within those target ranges is what we're after. 